Hey everyone, it's the part 13 of this uh, review and we are down to the last one. So I'm going to go over the formations here. Uh, there's only like five or six in the Leviathan book and then we'll be done. And then we can talk a little bit more specifics on units and how they fit into the list building. And we can talk about how to approach certain scenarios. Um, and I, th I think that'll be uh, some good times to be had there. So... Uh, yeah, it'll just be nice to be finally finished. It's kind of taken a long time to get here. And if you've been listening, it's taken you a long time to listen this far. So um, it's great. It's great. <laughs> All right, so first up, we got the hypertoxic node. Hypertoxic node, we got the point cost here, is... Um, crap. We got it right here. Hypertoxic node, 470 points. Uh, the formation includes one Hive Tyrant, one Toxicrine, and three Venom Throat Broods. Restrictions being that the Hive Tyrant must take the Toxin Sacks Biomorph, because we're going for, you know, Toxic here. Special Rules, Hypertoxic. Any unit, any hit inflicted by a model in this formation that has the Poison Special Rule uh, gains the Instant Death Special Rule on a roll, the two wound roll of a six. Hits inflicted by a Toxicrine in this formation have the instant death special rule on a 5 or a 6. Miasma of Death. The Hive Tyrant in this formation has the Toxic my Miasma Biomorph. In addition, the Hive Tyrant and any models within this formation that are within 12 inches of the Hive Tyrant can use their Toxic Miasma in each of their turns rather than only once per battle. So, Toxic is everywhere all over this formation. Um, it's supposed to be kind of poisonous themed I guess uh, it, it's just kind of weird that the three venom throat broods uh, they they're, they're a support unit but this is kind of trying to make them a close combat unit I still think this would be a fun formation to play I'm not sure if it was uh, very um, uh, what do I want to say I don't know if it's very effective um, so the hypertoxic rules for the Toxicrine used to be really good against Wraith Knights because you could just kill them. They used to be monstrous creatures before they were gargantuan creatures. So on a 5 or 6 you would kill them. And that was probably our best chance because he has 6 attacks. The best chance we had to kill something like that. Um, and then the High Tyrant getting Miasma, Toxic Miasma, um, opens some room for abuse because he can join units. Uh, albeit only Tyrant Guards. But normally he's not allowed to take Toxic Miasma because Toxic Miasma means any model that you're in base contact with, any unit that has a model that contains Toxic Miasma. So, for instance, a Hive Tyrant and three Tyrant Guards with a attached Tyranid Prime. If you were in base with any of those models and the Hive Tyrant used his uh, Toxic Miasma, that you would you would be hit because it counts all the units or all the models. Um and then you could do that every turn, so that's kind of that's kind of cool, actually. Um, however, if you give him tyrant guards now, he can't fit in a pod. It doesn't say he can't take wings, so you could could have a flying hive tyrant. But then most of your oh, you could take the uh, what's that flamer called? There's an artifact in the Tyrant book, and the name evades me right now. But there's a uh, Miasma Cannon or something, where you get a Small Blast Template or a 2 plus to Poison um, Flamer Template, and you can do Instant Death now with that. That might be a combo, but you have to take three Venom Throat Broods, uh, albeit they could only be one. You don't have to take three full Broods. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be so bad. And then you could put the Toxicrine in a Tyranocyte, have a flying high tyrant, call it a day, and then your elite slots are not taken up by venom throats. So there could be some uses there. Um, I hadn't thought of that before. I, I don't have any Toxicrine models though. That's and he's the only guy that I would potentially buy, um, other than the flyers that in, of the new models that came out. So next we'll go on to a much more a lot, much, a lot less useful formation called the Neural Node. Uh, it's a Maliceptor and three Zone Throat Broods. Each Zone Throat Brood must include a Neurothrope, so that means you have to take at least three. 
and the neural node is 730 points. So this is like this is one of the more expensive formations. Um, it says a monstrous presence in the warp. Each any models that are affected by the shadow of the warp special rule if they are within 18 inches of the mouse scepter from the, this formation, rather than 12 inches as would normally be the case. So that's that's what it should be anyway. You should if you're within synapse, it should be within synapse range. You are affected, but anyway. Power of the hive mind, the mouse scepter in this formation, and all units from the formation that are within 12 inches of the mouse scepter can reroll ones when they take a psychic test. So, honestly, this is probably the best way to take something down. Well, I don't want to say the best way because it's way more expensive. I don't know. You're, you're playing leadership hijinks, and it's just not that effective. Um, it sounds really great because then you're like, well, I can take the Death Leap Assassination Brood. Everybody gets minus one to the leadership. And if they're psychers, because they're within synapse range, they get minus three, so now they're minus four. And then I can, you know, with the neurothropes, I can sit there and suck all their souls out and then use warp blats a whole bunch. It sounds really great, and maybe you could get that to work, but I think to make this work, you would have to spend like a thousand points, and then you'd really just be hoping people are failing their leadership tests, which uh, all it would take is a single commissar, and now you're stubborn, or just any unit that just comes with stubborn, and all of that falls apart. So, I guess you keep that in mind. It's kind of a cool idea, but I don't know. The the malice scepters just really aren't that great, and the whole formation kind. Of, you do get to reroll ones when taking a psychic test, but that increases your chances of uh, perils, and it's just not probably not worth the points to be honest. And nine, having nine zoanthropes, that's probably stretching your Tyranid collection. I have six, and I've never played with six on the table. <laughs> so three is probably the amount of zoanthropes that you need in your collection, to be honest. Alright, Sky Tyrant Swarm. One Hive Tyrant, two Gargoyle Broods. The Hive Tyrant must take the Wings Biomorph. That's the formation. The Sky Tyrant Swarm um comes in at 320 points. Uh, command node, the Hive Tyrant in this formation adds 6 inches to its synapse range. So if you were to cast Dominion and take the Norn Crown, you would be 30 inches now. And then if, 36 inches if you were uh, next to a, a Spore Assist. So if you sat in the center of the table, you would touch the whole table with synapse. It's kind of cool. Monstrous Flock. The Hive Tyrant and Gargoyles in this formation are a single unit. The Hive Tyrant can use Lookout Sir rule to attempt to reallocate any wounds that it suffers onto a Gargoyle model from the unit and will pass Lookout Sirs on a roll of 2+. plus. The Hive Tyrant cannot leave the unit during the battle. It can only use the Gliding Flight Mode. The, purpose, or the combined unit counts as three units for victory point purposes if it is completely destroyed. So this is a really cool formation. So you are essentially getting a Flying Hive Tyrant and a big unit of gargoyles. You can go from 20 to 60 gargoyles in this brood. Some things to look out for is that their majority toughness 3. So something like a wyvern battery would really like threaten your hive tyrant um, potentially. Um, that being said, having 60 ablative wounds is a pretty big boon because you're really just trying to get the high tyrant across the table. Uh, the gargoyles could try to blind stuff, and then your web, it's web skill one when it's fighting the, the high tyrant, and um, you would probably just try to kit this guy out for close combat. Uh, something worth considering is if you were to take the maw claws, if you remove a model in close combat, it gives you preferred enemy, but then your whole brood would get prefer preferred enemy because if as long as one model has it, they all have it. Um, I would probably, I, as a 10-point upgrade, I think that's worth it. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a cool formation. I'd consider taking it for sure. Just be careful because if a Dreadnought charges you, it could get surrounded by Gargoyles, and it might take you a while for the Hive Tyrant to get there, and then the Hive Tyrant's not really that great at taking those out. So um, just be careful. Uh Obviously, the most competitive choices are the deck of flyerants that you fly around, but a flying hive tyrant with close combat weapons is kind of cool because you can jink 
and then they would all get a four plus cover save. And then with a venom throw around, they would have a two plus cover save sitting out in the open. So uh, this would probably be a great way to give cover saves to the rest of your army. So just keep that in mind. Um, plus, it's a safe synapse node that probably isn't going to die very quickly because of how many gargoyles you have. Um, Sky Blight Swarm, this is the next one. So this is the exact same as the other book. So kind of, a, kind of a shame. I feel like they wasted a page in here. They could have come up with something new, but they copy and pasted an old one. So I won't cover it. <laughs> next is the Spore Field Formation. I really like this one. It's 90 points. It's three spore mine, uh, mucolid spore clusters and three spore mine clusters. So three mucolids and three units of three spore mines. Advanced wave. All units in this formation have the infiltrate special rule. Spore field. Each time a mucolid spore or spore mine cluster from this formation is completely destroyed, roll d d6. On a roll of four plus, you can immediately place a new unit into ongoing reserve. That is identical in terms of original number of models, weapons, and upgrades to the unit that was just destroyed. These new units count as being part of the original formation, so roll d6 as described above if they are subsequently destroyed. Victory points are awarded as normal for new units in the formation that have been completely destroyed. So uh, as normal for them is uh, they, don't, they don't give victory points, so they don't count for mission objectives at all. So uh, you basically get free target practice dummies to drop in front of your opponent and they deep strike in every turn and uh, kind of just get in your opponent's face and waste their time. I really like these. They're very, it's 90 points, very easy just to add into your army and infiltrating up, it gives your opponent to shoot at something to shoot at, at the beginning and then on a 4 plus you get these guys back. So I would recommend this one. I think it's probably one of the more competitive options now just because it's so cheap and Honestly, Tyranid lists are drifting towards spore mines and spore pods and really just anything spores with flying hive tyrants around it. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, yes, I really like that one. Sky Tide. This is the last formation of the book and sadly it is similar to the Living Tide formation and that is super expensive. It is 2,825 points base. What is it? It is uh, one Sky Tyrant Swarm, so that's the flyer ant with the um, gargoyles. Three Sky Blight Swarms, which is ridiculous. Um, that would be very cheesy <laughs> because now you're talking about 12 Flying Monstrous Creatures and 90 gargoyles. Yeah. Plus the, so it's 110 gargoyles now. 12 flyer ant, or Flying Monstrous Creatures one flying hive tyrant that's in the with the gargoyles and then you get one spore field formation no restrictions uh, because who needs rules okay special rules the units in this formation retain all of the special rules as specified in the individual formations they basically the same command synaptic command network all other synapse creatures from this formation that are within synapse range of the hive tyrant from the sky tyrant swarm formation add six inches to their own synapse range so the other flying hive tyrants could be 18 inch range but really you have so many flying hive tyrants that it that's not a huge deal the swarm unleashed as long as the hive tyrant from the sky tyrant node formation has not been removed as a casualty you can reroll failed results when rolling to see if a gargoyle brood a mucolid spore cluster or a spore mine cluster from this formation has been completely destroyed is replaced so uh, this this formation it's more than two thousand points. So you probably aren't going to see it a lot, but in a three thousand point game, this is pretty ridiculous. Um, I, I can't imagine a lot of people would want to play against it. To be honest, uh, with the amount of flying monstrous creatures you have, it's like having army wide invisibility, unless they have sky fire, and uh, and then they'd be the gargoyles. The things they could shoot at are coming back on a four plus. So. Um, really thematic and a cool formation. This is kind of where I'd want to go. Uh, I have a list we'll talk about later. It's called the Here Be Dragons, but um, yeah, if you have the models, 
this is a really good formation and in a 3,000 point game you would save the final because 2,825 the final 175 points you would save for twin length of hours on everything and whatever else maybe uh, heavy venom cannons for the harpies and that would be it it would pretty much be without upgrades but um, it would be kind of cool so anyway that's the last of the formations and the last of my review videos. So I uh, look forward to some future content when we talk about um, maybe specific units in, uh, and how they build into lists. Um, I'm going to start talking through my list ideas. Uh, I'm not going to be listing out things like take this many of this, this many of this, because then that would indicate that I'm building towards a certain point value, which might be different than what you're doing. So I'm going to talk more through uh, like ideas uh, and concepts, and it'll, so it'll be a little more generic. But hopefully, you could grab onto something and use it in your own games. So anyway, please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening to this this far. And uh, please start submitting any kind of requests that you have for any specific videos because I will take them as I have finished my 13 part Tyranid Codex review. So anyway, thank you for your time. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.